welcome to Coding Adventures. Today we're gonna discuss about bubble sort and we're gonna attempt a short visualization of this algorithm in JavaScript. So let's get started! <laughs> All right, welcome back. So let me grab my pen and the first thing that we're gonna do today, we're gonna try to understand the bubble sort algorithm on paper and then we're gonna attempt to implement a, do implementation in JavaScript. All right, so I have here my notebook <coughs> and let's see what, Java, what bubble sort algorithm is all about. First of all, let's pick an array of numbers. Let's choose some numbers here and I'm gonna start <laughs> with a big number here like 100 and perhaps I should have a few other uh, numbers in between smaller numbers maybe maybe like this very short array and now bubble sort it allows us it's an algorithm it's a sorting algorithm that we can use basically to sort these numbers so we can put them in a particular order for instance in ascending order right so um, what we want to implement is basically to implement in javascript a function let's call this one bubble sort so when I'm gonna call this bubble sort function with this array, um, the function after it does it work, the array will be in a sorted order or the elements will be in an ascending order. All right, so how this algorithm is working? Well, first of all, we'll have to iterate over this array and we'll start with the first number and we'll iterate to all the elements. Actually, we're gonna stop <laughs> this number, not the last one, but one number in, uh, before that. And the reason being is that when we're going to iterate with a variable, for instance, i, that starts at index 0 in the array, right? So this is index 0, index 1, index 2, index 3, and this index 4. So when we're going to start at index 0, what we want to do is basically to look at the current number here and the number following that. So basically, this is at index i, and this is at index i plus 1. And we're going to compare them. Right, so we compare these two numbers. If these numbers are in the order that we intend, we leave them alone and we move on. But if they are not, and obviously these numbers are not in the right order, we're gonna swap them, right? So one comes here and 100 comes in the other place. Actually, let's do this. <laughs> Maybe we should actually uh, try to swap them on paper before we moving to swap them uh, in the code. So let me draw this array, like some sort of memory cells, right? So now we know that in JavaScript, we don't have real arrays like in other programming languages, but in general, an array is basically this uh, uh, data structure where elements are sorted, uh, or elements are stored one after the other in memory. So let me represent this array like, uh, um, <laughs> like this one. And let's put back here the number, so 100, 1, 10, 2, and 3, right? We have just this array. And as a matter of fact, why have those numbers like that? We can put some post-it notes on top. So this was the number 100. This was the number 1. Oh, <laughs> I should have drawn this one a little bit bigger, but uh, well, I think it's still okay. This is the number 10. <laughs> and then I need two more post-it notes. This will be the number 2. And this will be the number three like this all right so this is our array of numbers and the post-it notes are the elements and as above we basically start at this position here and we start to iterate to this array this is position i equals zero and then we start comparing the numbers so we compare these two first step that we are doing in this algorithm we compare the numbers so if the numbers are in the order that we want to leave them in place. If they are not, we swap them. So let's do that. We switch here. And of course, these are not in the right order. So we swap. And the next step, we increment i. So i becomes a disposition i. Right now, <laughs> i is here. All right. And we do the same again. We compare this number with the next number. Are they in order? Of course, they are not. So we swap them again. <laughs> Look at this 100, just went one step above. And next we increment i, so i becomes here. So this is our current position at this point, 
right? So this is the old position. So we are looking now at this position. Is and we do the same. We compare 100 with the next element. Are they in order? Of course they are not. <laughs> so we do the same. We swap them. And then we move to the next element. Now, this is the next element. <laughs> I'm trying to do them, do them bigger and bigger just to illustrate the current element. And we do the same. We compare the number with the number after it. Are these in order? Of course they are not. And we swap them. Just like that. And now you see why we are actually iterating on this array and we are stopping one element before and actually not on the last one is because we are comparing with the last number. So when we're going to compare position i, we are comparing with position i plus 1, which is actually the and the last number. All right. So what do we notice here? <laughs> we notice that this number 100, which was basically the first element in the array, just become the last element. So people say this it bubbled to the top right so 100 bubbled to the top but let's look again at the array here really carefully still the array is not sorted still 10 here is not in the right position so probably 10 should come and be just before 100 and then then the, the array will be sorted so it requires one more step right so all we have to do right now we have to repeat repeat again and after this repetition of course we'll end up if <laughs> if 10 will bubble up till here right because uh, at the last step when we're going to compare 10 with 100 they'll stay in place so this step probably our array will look like this 1 2 3 10 and 100 <laughs> so that will be the next step after the next repetition and now of course, to us, this array looks looks that is sorted. But here we have a repetition. How do we know when to stop this repetition? Well, even if we'll try to sort this array using one more repeat statement here, this won't produce any effect, right? So we compare 1 with 2, they stay in place. 2 with 3, they stay in place. 3 with 10, they stay in place. 10 with 100, they stay in place, right? So um, for us, uh, basically, when we are iterated on an entire array, and if we are not able to swap at least one pair, this is an indication for us that we should stop with this repetition because the array probably is already sorted, right? So <laughs> let's try to take all this mess that we have here on paper and see how we can put it in the code, shall we? So let me put my notebook aside and bring our code editor here. <laughs> we have here the code editor and the first step we're going to choose an array and perhaps we should choose exactly the same array that we put on paper first just to be uh, just to be able to <laughs> illustrate it clearly so we have uh, 100 um, oops, 100 1 10 2 3 <laughs> 100 1 whoop, 100 1 10 2 all right, so uh, this was our array. And now what we plan to do is to write a function called bubble sort <laughs> that will receive this uh, array as an argument and actually will do the sorting in place. We don't plan to return a new array. We just plan to basically, when this function will be called, we plan basically to sort this array in place. So after the function is executed on the array, we should see the array sorted. In other words, if we are printing here the array, let's say we print the initial array, and then we call bubble sort on the array, at this step, the array should be sorted. So if we are printing it again, we should see the array sorted. And println is a special instruction in this environment. We can use console log if we move in other environments, but uh, this is not important right now. Right. So right now, if we run the program, <laughs> obviously, bubble sort is not doing anything. So the, array, the two kind of display statements looks the same. Let's save this one, bubble sort. And we'll do baby steps here with the implementation of this algorithm. First, let's do what we did on the paper. So remember, we were iterating through basically that entire array using a and what other better structure to iterate than a loop structure? So we're going to 
iterate through the entire array, but we'll stop one element before the last, and we're gonna do this comparison. We're gonna compare the current element with the next element, and we'll try to swap them if they are not in the correct order. So this is what we plan to do here. So we're gonna do just one iteration on the array, just baby steps like we said, right? So uh, let's have a fork structure. Uh, we started the first element, which has index zero, and basically, um, we stop one element before, i++. Plus plus. And now let's read the two elements, the current one and the next after. So basically the first one will be array of i. And the next element will be array of i plus one, right? So these are the two elements that, uh, that we have here. And what we have to do is basically we need to uh, compare them. And if they are not in the proper order, swap them. So if A is greater than B, only if the first one is greater than the second one, um, on the first position we put the second element, so basically B, and then uh, AR. And then on the other position for the second element, we put A. So we basically we swap them, just like that, right? So let's run now the <laughs> program. Of course, it's not complete, as we saw on the paper, but if we run it, well, we are getting exactly the same result that we got on paper after the first iteration. So lo let's inspect here. After the first iteration, we, we basically got bubble 100 to the top here. So the initial array was this one and then 100 bubble to the top. And if we are looking in the code, this is exactly what happened. 100 bubble to the top. But still the array is not sorted. We have here still 10, which is not in the right position, so should come here. So all we have to do now is repeat, right? <laughs> so let's repeat it first manually like we did on the paper. So we're going to take the entire structure here and place it twice in the code <laughs> like this. And we'll run it. <laughs> well, the array looks sorted, but uh, this is just a coincidence, right? This array uh, was kind of, uh, or the way we design it on paper, we design it to be sorted in two steps, right? But uh, still, <laughs> let's try to pick up a different array, just to see if that two iterations um, are not enough, right? So let's pick, um, perhaps, um, here should have maybe a minus one, here we should have an two, an eight, perhaps here, something like that. I don't know if these elements are the good ones, but if we'll run them, after two iterations, well, yeah, it's not sorted. <laughs> eight uh, should come here after three. So requires more iterations or more repetitions. So it's clearly, we can see that we have to repeat this kind of iteration, not two times, but a number of times. So how many times? Well, as we said there before, we have to repeat it until we see that we cannot swap any other element, we mean, which means the array is already sorted. The easiest way to do that, we just repeat it for infinite here. <laughs> so we, we use a while true statement, which basically will create an infinite loop. And we try to create this, to repeat this one an infinite number of times, which of course, if we run the program right now, we'll crash and we'll have to reboot the computer or at least close the browser. So it's something missing, right? We still have to stop if we couldn't do any swap, right? So in order to see if we do any swap, we have here, see, when we are doing a swap, we have to turn on a flag, ding, we swap something. So let's declare a variable here. We can name it swap. That can take the, initially we assume that no element was swapped, right? But in the moment that one element is swapped, swap becomes true. All right. So now we are iterating through the entire array for finishes its job. And if at least one element was basic or two elements were swapped, this variable becomes true. So this is an indication for us that we have to basically continue. But however, if swap remains false, it means that the code never, never entered in this swapping routine, then it means the array is already sorted, so we have to break. So here we can put a condition, if not swapped, 
we inverse the logic here. <laughs> if it's not swapped or this variable was never, it never became true, if it's not swapped, then we're going to issue a break. And basically this break will break from the infinite loop. And now the code looks okay, but <laughs> just to be on the safe side, we're gonna save it. <laughs> In case we'll crash, we can recover it. All right, so uh, let's run it. And indeed, the array is now sorted. And we can pick up different examples. It's always good to test, uh, you know, with uh, bigger data sets, because you never, you never <laughs> know. So you have to test the code really, really carefully here. So uh, yeah, let's, you know, you can create multiple numbers here, but I'm pretty sure the array is sorted right now. So the, our algorithm is correct and is sorting. And it's pretty simple. It's exactly like what we did on the paper, right? Um, now we can look at the code and try to implement a few optimizations here. So one optimizations that we can do, remember after the first iteration, so let's take back the notebook. After the first iteration, the biggest number bubbles to the top, right? So we know for sure that this is the biggest number. After the second iteration, the next number bubbles here and we end up here. So when we are just iterating on the array, initially we are iterating, uh, yes, when we are iterating on the array, initially our i goes from zero till basically here i being uh, length of array minus one, right? this position, actually it's minus two, the actual position, because it's zero based, but uh, it goes still here. But after the first iteration, since 100 or the biggest element bubble to the top, we can iterate to fewer and fewer elements. So this time we should iterate till here, next time we should iterate till here, next time we should iterate till here. <laughs> I'm doing off canvas. <laughs> so we should iterate less and less, which is basically making our program a little bit more efficient perhaps. So uh, not terribly efficient. Anyway, bubble sort is not a terribly efficient algorithm, but uh, anyway, uh, let's try to kind of optimize it a little bit. And the way we're gonna do that, instead of um, actually having this as a, like a constant, we can just decrease this one uh, with one after each iteration. So let's take this one, perhaps this one in a variable, just this part, and we can have, oops, oops. What did I do? Did I delete anything? I think not. Yeah, let's take this one in a variable and we can go and have it somewhere here. We can name it len from length of array, uh, which is has this value. And uh, what we can do is basically we can decrease it a little bit before each iteration. So first of all, anyway, since we are taking this, so normally we should decrease it after the first iteration, but since we have to decrease it here with uh, one anyway, we can decrease it before. So it will be just the right value at the start of the code. So we can have um, actually, uh, yeah, len, and the way we decrease it, we actually decrement it by one, like that, right? So now, instead of having this as a constant variable, we are comparing i less than len, which at the first iteration again means ar length minus one. So it's the right value. But after four finishes and we are going back in a new repetition, basically length will be a little bit less and a little bit less and a little bit less. And this is okay. As I said, uh, after one of the iteration, at, at least one element, I mean one element bubble to the top there and it's in the right position. So uh, let's run it. And indeed, uh, we still have the elements in order. <laughs> so one small optimization doesn't hurt uh, anybody. So uh, this is good, right? So um, <laughs> this is not terrib something terribly exciting. And we propose actually to visualize this one uh, in <laughs> JavaScript. So um, let's see how can we achieve a nice visualization in JavaScript, perhaps not too complicated, but kind of interesting or at least useful, right? So back to the drawing board. We are taking back the notebook and let's plan a short visualization, right? So we have here uh, <laughs> our notebook <laughs> and actually we are designing here a canvas. This is the canvas, the computer canvas or the 
uh, in this particular case since we are using this environment this canvas has a uh, you know it's a predefined resolution of 800 by 600 pixels and what we can do to visualize this algorithm of course we're going to generate an array of um, random numbers just not to you know not to have to do too much work of <laughs> filling up that array but we're going to try to generate an array of random numbers and then display these numbers like some small lines like this and these numbers will be remember again drawn randomly based on their value and perhaps we can fill the entire canvas with this number of lines right so all this will represent the number so let's say this one and actually we can select as range of the numbers we can generate them since the canvas is 600 high these numbers can be in the range of 0 to 600 so a zero number will be tiny bit here perhaps we should start from one <laughs> not to have zero so one is that perhaps this number it's uh, this one is five five hundred and sixty this one will be like five hundred uh, this one will be, I don't know, it's a little bit bigger, 510, <laughs> this one is 1, and so on. So we have these numbers. So we plan basically to run the algorithm, and we expect these kind of lines to move, and at the end, just to end up here with the biggest line, and then the, 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 the next one, and so on and so forth, like some sort of a kind of triangular shape. And in that moment, basically, our array is fully sorted, all right? So um, let's start basically by doing, um, yeah, <laughs> by doing this kind of thing. Um, hmm. <laughs> uh, let's uh, let's keep this code. We're gonna it's saved already. And right now, uh, oh, let me share it with you on the chat. <laughs> this one is the the basic implementation, just the algorithm. Bubble sort one just the algorithm is there you have it on the chat and now let's start a new code here because it starts to get a little bit busy so let's start again baby steps let's make a function that will generate an array as i mentioned we don't plan to just create a predefined array uh all right and after that uh we're gonna create a function to display the array and then we're gonna work on the actual visualization all right so let's generate an array let's have a function generate array and the question will be how many elements that will be the first question how many elements do we want in array and elements should have values between v1 and v2 and we plan when we're gonna invoke it to basically say okay with this we need this number of elements and the element should be between 1 and 600 basically just to be a little bit easier to display them without having to do complex calculations to map them into another domain so let's uh, start by having an empty array here and then we're gonna do a for uh, loops uh, for loop for let i equal zero i less than n i plus plus because we, we need to el generate um, n elements and we're gonna push into this array a random number between um, v1 and v2 like this but actually random returns a float number let's round it so we can have only integer numbers in this one all right and now we return ar and we can invoke this one pretty simple uh let ar here generate array let's say we want to generate 10 elements between 1 and 600 that's how we're gonna invoke it uh, let's test it really quickly uh, first let's save the program bubbles sort visualization we're gonna save it run it i'm always encouraging you to test the programs from time to time to avoid the accumulation of errors so we have a pretty good uh, a pretty valid array of numbers all are kind of big numbers we didn't get any uh, lower numbers yeah so see anyway it's working uh, it's working as expected here we have the function that generates the array how many numbers can we generate? Well, if you remember those vertical lines, um, perhaps we should basically um, allocate a little bit of space on the screen for one of these lines. So let's pick this guy here. Perhaps 
this line, if we think at it, can be basically inside of a narrow band. So basically this band here will have a certain width, right? Because And we'll draw the line on the left side. We draw the line on the left side and then the rest of the space will be white space just not to kind of be too busy right so we we basically have this width here which can be a constant so if we make this width a little bit less we can fit more lines uh if we make it a little bit um, you know that uh, bigger we fit less lines so let's uh, have that constant const um band size i don't know 10, 10, maybe uh, we are, um, hmm, how many should we do it? Um, 10, 10 pixels, I think, because they are 800 pixels per horizontal. So if we have this one, 10 will fit approximately 80 numbers. So I think it's fine, 10, right? So um, now, okay, as we said, before we are moving into the actual sorting, let's write a function to display the actual array. Uh, on the canvas. <sighs> now we are getting to work with the canvas. Function display array. That will take an array as an argument, right? So um, that will be, we have to iterate all the elements and basically draw a line. For let i equal zero, i less than a, uh, ar dot length, i plus plus, right? So we iterate through the, all the elements. The actual element is um, AR of i. <laughs> if we want to take it in a separate variable, of course, it's not uh, necessary to take it in a separate variable. And now we have to figure out its horizontal, how to draw these lines. The lines, we're going to draw them with a line. So we need to know the x position on horizontal. And then uh, since these elements are basically uh, in the range of 0 to 600 we basically say height uh, minus number and then here it's x again and then here it's height height is a constant that is basically gives us our uh, canvas uh, height which is 600 but we can use it as a constant here the question is what will be the x coordinate for the line right so um the x coordinate for the line well we can do it in multiple ways we can uh, use a map function that we have available here it's coming from p5.js and we can map basically the i that goes from zero to this n uh to uh we can to zero to width that's one way of doing it um another way of doing it is basically say i times and we can have this one band size anyway uh, as a constant defined here so uh, we, we can do this one as well Okay, so let's uh, try and uh, use this function. Instead of println, we're gonna say display array, and we're gonna call this function, shall we? <laughs> Not too many elements. Oh, because we generated a fixed set of elements, 10. Well, uh, let's generate actually, how many elements? Uh, let's generate width divided by band size. And actually, because, you know, we, we, we can round it up because this may become a um, uh, number with decimals. And the numbers will be between 1 and 600. So if we run it, yep, we have <laughs> hopefully enough numbers here. Let's uh, play here with band size being 100. Yeah, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, which is correct. We have 8 bands. So uh, if we have... 10, probably there are 80 over there. Uh, what we can do also, we can put here a stroke weight. Actually, let's extract this one outside. Uh, here, for the entire uh, display, stroke weight, and perhaps a bigger number, so the lines will be a little bit, yeah, better. All right, so <laughs> we have an, a canvas full of randomly drawn lines. The question is, how can we animate them or uh, <laughs> yeah, because at the end of the day will be an animation. How can we sort this array? And after each step, basically, we can visualize again and again the sorted array. And um, let's write a function, first of all, function sort array. That will receive the array as an argument, right? And uh, what we can do is basically, what we can do, we're going to just, because we want... <laughs> 
did you notice when we ran the previous program, the sortie just happened in a blink of a second, right? We cannot do that. Um, let's, let's write just an iteration here on the entire array and only this one will visualize it, right? And then we're gonna repeat it again and again, but basically redraw the screen in between repetitions. So um, let's have a variable i. I'm gonna just uh, write here really quickly, um, rewrite here, here really quickly the algorithm. a equal ar of i, let b is ar of i plus one. We could have copied from the previous program, but uh, a little bit of exercise doesn't uh, <laughs> doesn't hurt. So yeah, this is the entire iteration. Uh, what we can do, we can also keep that variable that we, we had it uh, swapped is false. So if we just iterate on the entire array uh, and oh, here we need to say if a, <laughs> we're, we're not done actually, we didn't swap them. If a is greater than b, then only then ar of i becomes b and ar of i plus one becomes a and now swap is true. Now we actually swap them and what we can do we can basically return swap. Since the array is happening in place that one we don't have to return it but we can return the swapped variable just to give an indication that okay we try to uh, sort the array and if the return is true means that array still needs sorting, right? So, or is sorting. So let's put a comment here. Sort uh, performs one iteration on array AR, one sorting iteration, returns true if is still sorting meaning that we have to invoke it again this function because it, we didn't finish right when we're gonna return false it means we didn't swap any element so basically we finished but anyway we don't want to do here that while loop that infinite while loop and again the reason we are not doing it here is because we want to run this function and visualize really quickly what's happening after the function is run and then run it again and visualize it again. Otherwise, if we just put here the while, the entire operation will just execute so fast, then we'll see just the end result. We'll not be able to see <laughs> in between, right? So um, how can we achieve visualizations uh, here in uh, CodeGrapy? Of course, using a function loop. So let's define that function. And if you're coming from P5.js background, that function is draw, it's similar here. Anyway, CodeGrapy is based on P5.js. <laughs> so let's clear the screen. And then what we want to do is inside here, we want to sort the array. And after we sort it, we want to display it. So exactly this operation here, we don't need it outside. We want to sort it and then display it. And we are not quite done because we have to stop at one point and things like that but let's uh, just run it like this for the first time <laughs> all right <laughs> our array getting sorted uh and it's executing quite fast actually we can limit that uh, speed and we can say here frame rate there are different ways to execute it but uh, uh, to, to, to modify it right now to execute slower but the easiest way is basically to uh, lower the frame rate so function loop will be called less time per second basically 10 times per second instead of 60 times per second by the browser okay so let's run it again <laughs> and indeed the array is getting sorted so let's see what we are visualizing here we are visualizing the state of the array after one complete iteration right which is quite interesting i like it but anyway let's make it uh when it's array gets sorted, let's make it, let's generate a new array and sort it again. So basically the program will run continuously, right? So uh, for this, we can make use of that return variable. So if the sort array is returning false, <laughs> basically uh, if it's returning false, we just, uh, meaning the array was not sorted, we can generate a new array. So we can say, if not sort array, which is similar to saying, that is returning false. So in this particular case, we want AR just to generate a new array. 
just like this, right? And we should be in good shape, right? And then we display it. Let's run it. <laughs> it okay, it's sorting is continuing, it's continuing, it's sorting, 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 and we have a new array. <laughs> So it's working as expected, right? It's a nice visualization and we see how the data sits in the memory. Um, yeah, if we look at the code here, I don't think we have to initialize here initially the array because when we go to the sort, yeah, let's try to just a small optimization. Yeah, still working because for the first time, if we start with an empty array, when it go here in the sort, uh, basically, uh, because it's returning false, uh, we'll generate an array here. So we don't have to generate it in the beginning, which is a little bit nicer because uh, we don't have to duplicate that code. And if we are looking here, another optimization, we can implement the same optimization that we did before. We don't have to just loop to the entire array, but stop each time one step, uh, one step uh, um, earlier than the end of the array or sooner than the end of the array. So perhaps instead of here, how to implement that? Well, we can implement that variable that we incremented work. Let's have this kind of concept sorting round, right? <laughs> so what we are seeing here, we are seeing sorting rounds. We are seeing the first time, the second time, the third time until it's sorted. So let's have this concept of sorting rounds. And basically we decrement, initially the sorting round is basically, let's say one. Let's, let's have it as a variable. Let sort round is one. We are the first round of sorting. When we are repeating, of course, sort round uh, becomes plus one, right? So um, uh, that, that, that will be fine. So after we are finishing one sort, sort round, we can increment sort round. And also we can make use of this variable. Next time we'll find it as two. Instead of decrementing one, we decrement the sort round, right? So should be one, two, three, and so on. So we just uh, iterate less and less for the next sorting rounds. And of course we have also to reset it here. So after we generate a new array, we need to make sort round back to one. Otherwise sort round will end up at a certain value. So let's run it again. We should so see no difference. It's such a small array then the small optimization should not matter. But what, <laughs> what is interesting is that the <laughs> program is running and we have a visualization. Is this a good visualization or not? Hmm. Let's uh, look at it and let's see if we spot something that we didn't expect. Yeah, I, I don't like one aspect with it. I don't see that effect of bubbling up. If you remember when we draw on the paper, we say that the biggest number bubbles up and here it looks like the smaller numbers bubble down, not bubble up, um, like, which is fine. But I think this we are seeing this because um, we do a full iteration of the entire array and then we stop and display the array on the screen. We do another iteration, we stop and do the uh, display the array on the screen. Um, what we can do is try to display them also in between. So. <laughs> right now here, if we're coming back to the code, basically, um, we basically we're gonna try, or coming back to the uh, notebook here, we can try to display it not only at the end after the first iteration completed, which we are doing right now, but also after we do one swap, display the array, or after we do another swap, display the array, and so on and so forth. So basically, this should give us a little bit more clarity to what's going on in the computer memory when we are doing the swapping. Uh, the thing is that uh, let's let's look at the code. How easy it is to implement that kind of implementation? So first of all, and le let's uh, let's compare them side by side a little bit. The two versions, uh, the ver this version, the the visual in uh, the graphical display, and just the plain uh, and simple algorithm. So if we compare them side by side, you know, in the algorithm itself, we had the iteration and while loop in one function here, we had to extract this one in a separate function, which we had to do because we had to invoke this one from the loop. Now what we can do, we can extract the inner part of the for in a separate function. And um, that will be basically 
because we want to invoke it after and display it after each step, right? Oh, which reminds me, I didn't share this program with you. So let me share it on the chat here. So this is bubble sort two, basically with visualization and it's on the chat. So if we'll extract like that, we'll fragment a little bit more uh, that kind of uh, function, but it's kind of necessary, at, at least the way I'm intending. So let me save it again, bubble sort visualization number two here. And let's see how we split this one. So we, we basically want to extract this one, the entire thing perhaps, just like that in a separate function. Um, yeah, let's extract the entire thing here. First of all, we'll take the entire code. I think I'm not missing anything. <laughs> if it will not work, we'll have to fix it. And let's let's extract in a function called, let's say, try swap, right? Because that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to swap them, but we are not. We may not swap them, right? So, um, and another thing is because we are invoking this function from the outside, we're gonna make this i a global variable, right? So. Uh, it gets managed outside of the loop uh, loop function here, the one that we have here. Now, it's not a good practice to make a global variable named i. <laughs> it's kind of bad, 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 but uh, uh, you, know, you know, it doesn't hurt in our case. It's a small program and also perhaps even this swapped. So let's have two vari global variables, i and swapped. So um, yeah, i. Uh, well, we can start with i as being zero initially and swap as being basically, swap is false, exactly like it starts initially. And the way we are doing this is because we are breaking that for, so instead of for to manage the state, we are managing the state in some global variables. So in this way, we can basically go inside and display it. Okay, all right. So we are we are in good shape here, right? But we'll not have any for here. That's the main point. Um, we can still keep the sort array function, but what sort array will do, we're gonna make use of those global variables and try to invoke try swap a little bit and then increment the i and invoke it again and increment the i and so on and so forth until it finishes. So in this way, when we are calling from outside, it's like sort array is performing just a baby step. It's not sorting the entire array because we're eliminating the for again. But we're looking at, at the for here. So we want to keep the condition because we want to go as long as this is basically happening. So uh, the condition will keep it. So we can say if, so if this is, basically the condition is true we, we plan to call try swap <laughs> and I, i'm not even sure why we extracted in a separate function we, we didn't have to extract it <laughs> yeah we didn't but anyway it doesn't hurt right now and then we also plan to do this one because what for is doing after it's running the code which is basically right now try swap it's incrementing the i so it's incrementing i plus plus right so we plan to do this one and so we perform a baby step. We, we perform a small swap, right? Where we perform this thing here. So if i is less than length of the array, it means we are still inside that array. We didn't finish a full iteration, right? So in this case, okay. We can still make use of the return and say we'll return a true here in this point because we stop. We want to return and we want to come back into the caller, which the caller is basically the function loop. And uh, basically, this sort will happen. We'll do just a micro sort <laughs> and we'll do display. And then loop will be called again and we'll do another micro sort and we're going to display it. So we return true here. True having the meaning is still sorting. So here, if will not generate a new array. So we are still skipping this middle part here. We are good. Okay, so if we are still inside the array, it means that we have to try to swap them and advance i, similar to how for was doing, and then return true meaning we are still sorting. Okay, so we can eliminate this fault structure here. 
However, <laughs> now the tricky part comes. So we finish that four, right? So if, if, if we finish that four, what should we do? First of all, we should look, right, it here. So if we are outside of the if, basically this condition didn't happen. So this return didn't happen. So basically we, if we reach this part, we mean it means we iterated once through the array, once. So now the question is, probably I should we should reset I and should jump back at the beginning and it, uh, prepare it to iterate again. Because we have to iterate several times to this array, remember that repetition, until swap be, uh, becomes false. So we can just swap here. So if, if we swapped basically an array in the previous iteration, it means that we have to prepare back the, the variables, the global variables that are uh, were part of the for before to try to swap it again. So I becomes again at the beginning, uh, swap becomes false. <laughs> and then basically, um, yeah. And also we increment the sort round because we are preparing for a new sort round. And also, and also we are returning true here. Why are we turning true? So even if you are at the end of the iteration and basically we went once to the elements of the array, because swapped is true, it means that we have to perform another iteration. So we are returning true, meaning it's still sorting. Okay, all right. So I think we covered this situation. So right now we covered the situation. We are inside the array, we're still sorting. We finish the array, but swap is still true, we're still sorting. And now I think here we can say that basically return false, meaning we are not sorting, right? So at uh, this end, uh, so basically here, no element was, yeah. So here, if no element was swapped in previous iteration, we consider the sorting done. So we, that's our meaning for false and true, because we said here we true means it's still sorting. And we make use of this return value here in the loop. Uh, and the, the first time we return something that it's false, basically, if we are not sorting, we generate a new array. So we start over. Let me save it. It's pretty risky to run it like that. But if we write the program correctly, should run. All right, we see something there. <laughs> Let's see if the line stops. Oops. <laughs> so something good happened there. We see a an element bubbling up to the top, trying to bubble up to the top, which is good. But somehow when it reaches the end here, so this condition was fine. These things here probably are not working fine, right? So uh, we have to see what's going on here. <sighs> okay. So we generate an array here. Sort around this one. We display it. We try to keep the meaning basically inside of the sort. Let's see what we put in the try swap array. Basically, we are reading the elements. A and B, we define them here. Yeah, so so this true. So it's exactly that inner part of the four. So this one should look perfectly fine. Now, if you are on the chat here and spot the error, <laughs> hello to Brazil. Um, yeah, uh, let me know. I'm trying to locate the error here. What I did wrong. Uh, it's something a fine error here. Oh, here I don't think we need this one because we move it globally. Oh, huh, perhaps this is the thing. Yep, let's try to remove this line because otherwise we are resetting the state. Let's run it. First element is trying to bubble up to the top. Let's see if it stops there. <laughs> All right, and the second element bubbles up to the top. All right, le le let me stop it actually, remove this frame rate 10 because right now we need to run full speed because <laughs> framing 60, 60 is the default. We can remove this one entirely actually. Oh, hello, ecological. Let's run it. All right. 
Bubble salt in action! <laughs> All right, we see how now more precisely how the elements are bubbling to the top. And notice here, they are actually bubbling till it encounters a bigger element and that bigger element starts to go forward and that initial element stops somewhere in, in the middle. <laughs> Let's see. Now the program should speed up if we implement it correctly. That optimization, we have to just iterate on fewer and fewer elements as we are approaching. <laughs> Let's see. Vroom, vroom. Yep. It seems that it stops here because it doesn't spend time on the extra area. And right now it speeds up a little bit. Yep. Speeds up. Okay, it's almost sorted. Sorted. Yay! <laughs> and this is bubble sort visualization. The second option, the second, um, the second variant. Uh, it's actually visualizing uh, bubble sort at a more granular level inside. Uh, the first one was basically visualizing it after one full iteration. So let me play this one on the chat as well. Uh, so this is basically bubble sort three. Bubble sort three with granular visualization. And the program is there for the chat for your enjoyment. You can open it, modify it. Now, um, let me open again uh, the program and compare it really quickly with the original one containing just the algorithm. This one. All right. So uh, if we are looking at this one, basically, this one, of course, we encapsulating the entire algorithm in a single function, which is very, very fast. But here, the reason we had to split it into this mul um, multiple function is because when we are invoking them from the loop, we want to invoke just a slice of this function, right? And then immediately display the result. Advance a little bit the sorting and display the result. However, we did this one at the expense of kind of chopping the <laughs> algorithm the uh, while, but. Um, you know, I think this is the uh, this is the price we had to uh, to pay for this one. However, um, if we, once we move further, maybe we're gonna learn ab about other concepts. Uh, there is actually a, a simpler way to implement this one, uh, or not uh, not simple way to call it, but uh, a way to keep this structure while we are doing the visualization. We can do that when we're gonna uh, learn about generics. So maybe we should create a second version in the future, uh, bubble sort visualization with generics. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, for now, uh, this is the version that, uh, and we are about to wrap up the lesson here. I hope that you enjoy it. Um, write in the comments uh, if you like it and what else do you prefer to see here on the channel. And as always, I'm thanking you for watching. Happy coding and see you next time. Subscribe to the channel if you like it. See you next time.